Hello, I'm going to show you how to make a pom-pom. There's several different ways to make them, and uh, it's pretty easy. I just finished knitting a toque. That's my cat in the background. A, you know, a snow hat. And um, this is the finished product. This and then you fold it. And I just thought it would look better if I put uh, a little pom-pom. So, basically what you do is you just take like some kind of drawing paper or something that's a little like cardboard but not too hard to cut, but neither too thin. So something in between. I'm just using a little piece of paper. Well, a very a thick piece of paper. Drawing paper. You can go to an art supply store to get this, and um, you cut a, you just fold it in half, well, you fold it however size you want. Um, I don't need to make a very big pom-pom, so I'm just folding an edge. So, you cut a half circle, two half circles. Okay, it might not look like one right at the beginning. You can always fix it. So cut bigger when you start off. You can uh, use a compass if you want to outline um, the half circle if you have trouble cutting that accurately. But you want both of them to be the same. So that's why you don't really want... I kind of cut them together eventually, so... Um, I'm trying to make this look like a half circle. So I'm going to cut one first. The half. My cat wants to go outside, but it's too hot right now, and I usually have to watch her, so... Minette, wait! Not now! Um... This looks more like a half circle. So now that I kind of have a general idea of how I want it, I kind of cut the outline of the other one if I don't want to cut them both together because it's too thick and too hard to cut. And then you want to cut a little center hole, kind of like a donut basically. You just want to cut a donut. Make a donut. So if I ignore her, she'll stop meowing. Because even if I tell her no, it's not the time to go outside, uh, she'll keep me on, even though she understands. So maybe it's best not for me not to say anything. But she hears me talking, so she's probably wondering what's going on. Because usually when I talk, I talk to the cats. So. Or some visitors. <laughs> Okay, so then you unfold it, and you've got two, two of these thingy jigs. I think the whole time the camera was a little bit higher, but there. Anyways, you got the idea, right? So you have two of them, and um, I usually use like three. If it's a very thin yarn, you want to use more than one piece, but I'll use like, this time I used three pieces to reinforce mine. Um, so you take like three pieces of yarn that are long enough, and you want longer than this, okay? That's, I'll show you. You want about... 20 centimeters, I don't know, 16 inches, 10 inches, something like that. Just something enough to pass it around here, roughly 
speaking to pass it around on in between the two cutout circles and just make sure it loops around the center cutout holes and then um, you want to cut a long strand of wool and I usually take it from the center just because it's easier to, to loop around this from the center and take both ends so I finished one end almost here and I just go passing it around the center hole is a good idea not to make it too wide but neither too small where I can't otherwise you're gonna have to thread a, a needle and you can get one of these it's just more cumbersome but you can get one of these little um, uh, needles designed for yarn um, so then you just kind of loop it around. And this is it like this. And just keep looping it around, passing it around through the hole, around and around like this. And you want to try to get it to where I think towards the end I might actually have to use the uh, the, th the needle threading. Pardon me, the threading needle. So. Um, but you want to have a, a decent thickness so that later when we cut it along here and we tie these ends, it's going to poof out and make um, a nice ball, a pom-pom basically. So here's my other end. I'm trying to keep, what I did is three strands and I tied them loosely together to remind myself not, you know, that those are going to be to secure this all together. And I just keep passing this around. Let me add some more here, more thickness, because otherwise it's going to be uh, an anorexic pom pom. <laughs> a really skinny one that's just kind of like flimsy. You want it really thick, so the more yarn you pass around, the thicker it's going to be and more plush. So I think it's a fun addition to a snow hat. Um, it's a nice finishing touch, I think. I use this knitting pattern that uh, I kind of reformatted it a bit because I tend to be, I like to make up my own stuff and uh, kind of add my own touch to things. So originally the hat pattern that I did was designed for a thicker wool and also a different type of stitching and I learned a nice stitching from um, this awesome YouTube YouTuber and um, I got his name right off now because I guess uh, I'm being filmed and I'm under pressure <laughs> but um, yeah I, I hope you guys kind of like this video at least and learn some cool stuff to I think to make as a gift or I mean you can use pom poms and the dis you know and, and add them to I don't know snow hats or other things even it just makes a fun addition and, and it's decorative and um, children can this is uh, something from childhood like children can do uh, for fun if you're babysitting or uh, your children want something to do other than have them glued at the TV set some fun family activity or like if you're making winter accessories and like as in my case just to uh, sell at an art fair or give to a friend. The last hat I made in the video with the the corks. I don't know if you saw it. Well, um, that one I, I gave that hat to a friend, but I didn't make a pom pom. This was kind of suddenly something that I thought of. It dawned on me. I don't know, I guess this morning I thought it could be a good
good idea to add this. Just because the, the, the tip of it, you can either add a button to kind of conceal this hole. Because at the very end, it like the, the original pattern said, just uh, take your yarn and pull through all the leftover loops. And um, I did tug quite a bit, but I still left that kind of artifact. So I just think uh, the button's kind of blah. This is more fun. If you can wear this and go skiing. Or even it would be kind of cool to, uh, you could maybe get a different yarn. I wouldn't do it with this Angora yarn, but um, knit, I mean not knit, like, or crochet, or braid a thick, uh, several thick um, ends, and then you could attach pom-poms at the end. That would be really cute and maybe small pom-poms that would fly in the air when you go skiing really fast or snowboarding. <laughs> so, that's a fun thing. Anyways, anything kind of, yeah, I make something stylish and fun and with the economy, it's hard to find good quality things anymore, so, in my opinion. So, um, this is fun. So I'm going to cut what I was telling you earlier here. This is another piece. And uh, I'm going to get a long piece. and But not too long where you're just like fumbling, trying to find the end and winding it around till you know, all of a sudden the yarn forms a big knot. So this is long enough where you can kind of manage it. So I'll have a lot of loose piece, Not, well, several loose pieces, but... Just make sure not to be cutting into the the end that you're going to be tying. So that's why I kind of did a little... Um, I folded them over as well as going to do a knot and then left them loose. So that way it reminds me not to cut those later on. So here I folded it in half as I was sharing or telling you about earlier. And... Um, you just kind of string this through again through the donut hole and then um, only half of it so you have half length on each side and then just go as before winding around one end and then winding around the other end so I'm almost done I want to get to the part where I get to to cut this and show you. I want to just, um, I wonder if I can pause. I'm not very savvy at this. I'm still one of those newbies. So please be nice. And uh, because we're all a beginner at one point with these videos. And um, I'm a very friendly person. I'm just provoked, I guess, that I try to still be friendly. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess we all have our deficiencies. and. I'm not perfect. I'm human, so I'll stop rambling, but I'm almost done here. I still want to make it rather thick, so I'm going to find out here if I can pause this. Hold on.